Welcome to session 12 of uh, Introduction to Production Management, OMIS 302. Today we'll look at queuing analysis, or in other words, we call queuing models. We have seen timeliness as a, a dimension of quality, where we always want to ensure that services are rendered to customers in a timely manner. Now, it is apparent for every firm to actually assess or evaluate the time taken to serve their customers. That is evaluating how long their customers actually wait in queues for, for services. Or it could even be, yeah, it could be a service, it could be a product, it could be anything. Now, see, the point is no one loves to wait. If you go into the banking hall and there are long queues, you are irritated. If you need to go see the doctor, they are, and they are, you got to wait in front of the consulting room and all that. No one really loves that kind of experience. And so it is just good that we understand how we can improve on the waiting lines in, in production. And so like we said, the backdrop of this discipline is to ensure efficiency and improve on our operations. And so timeliness is one aspect of operations that is key to the performance of every organization. So we, we want to, let's, let's understand or let's have some introductory uh, meanings or understandings of, of this concept. Now, uh, human beings line up to make purchases. So all we just want to say is queuing is, is a normal phenomenon in, in, in everyday life. You, you find us in queues everywhere. Machines wait in line to be served, planes wait to take off, customers line up at the counter to pay for their selections. You, know, you go to the malls, you need to wait at the checkout counter all the time. So, you know, all these things are, are experiences that we have day in, day out. Now, we can reduce the waiting time by adding more service. Or the combination of the cash register and the operator is called the server. So, all we just want to make, the point we just want to make here is, we're going to look at techniques of improving on waiting times of customers. Now look, if any customer comes in and gets his or her service timely, they're happy. And chances are that they'll come back for repeated sales. But where customers come to your, your floor or come to the service delivery point and it is said that they always have to wait for long periods to assess whatever service they came for, chances are that they'll defect to other providers. And so you would want to look at how you improve on your waiting time. And we say that one way of improving on the waiting time is to add more service. Now, a server is just uh, you know, the, 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 the unit or the point where the service is rendered to the, the, the customer. And so if you go to a banking hall and there is just one teller, we say there is only one server. When you have more than one server, maybe if you have two tellers, we can say there are two servers. And so you can have multiple servers and then you can also have a single server. So you see, so what about the mandatory costs? No, you just need to understand that anything that you do would come up, will come out with uh, some additional cost. Now, so it says that this is the idea of, of, of queuing. There's a trade-off between the cost of improved service and the cost of making customers wait. Think about this critically. There is a trade-off, or the trade-off between cost of improved service and the cost of making customers wait. What, which of these would you want to bear? Would you want to bear the cost of an improved service or the cost of making customers wait? And I can assure you that the cost of making customers wait is more heinous than the cost of improving your service. Because one, you could end up losing the customer. And if you're losing your customers, then your, your business is, is just on the down spiral. You know, it means you're going out of business. So this is just one out of a thousand reasons why you always need to look out for rather improving on your service than incurring the cost of making a customer wait. Now, so we shall, we shall discuss the single server system for, for, for this session. Now, so it's going to be one of the assumptions we are going to, that will form the basis of this uh, session. Now, so what are some of the elements of a waiting line? So it says that customers do not arrive at a constant or evenly paced rate. So the assumption here is that customers actually arrive in a random manner, okay? 
maybe in a minute you can have three customers arriving in the next second you could have one in a minute there could be none in that order it, it's erratic you you can lay your hand on the order in which customers arrive they come in a random manner and then also customers are not saved in an equal amount of time it could take a customer it could take two minutes to save a particular customer it could also take five minutes to save another customer because it is possible that each customer would have a certain different uh, demand. If you go to the banking hall specifically, a customer could be coming in there just to check a balance. You could have a customer coming in there to pay. Even paying in, a customer could be paying the foreign currency or the home currency. So, you know, all these things culminate into having different service times for, for customers. Now, a waiting line is continually increasing and decreasing in length. So, it is possible, depending on the relationship between the, the rate at which people come in and the rate at which customers are saved, your waiting line could be continuously increasing or it could also be, be decreasing, in length, depending on, and we'll understand that one later. Now, it also approaches an average rate of customer arrivals. Now, so we would, we would, we would understand this in a certain sense, that if for, for the purposes of this analysis, we would delve or we will use more of an average. Now, because if, if you want to find out the average number, the number of people who come in into your banking hall within a certain time frame, chances are that it could be zero, it could be two, it could be up to whatever number. Are we okay? And so, you, we, but we can, we can take data on this, on, on uh, let's say, on average basis and come out with, on the average, how many number of customers have come in a day, in an hour, in a week, you know, you know that. So, okay, so and then it approaches an average time to serve the customer. So these are some of the elements of, of waiting time analysis. Now, it says that management of waiting lines and decisions about waiting lines are based on these averages for customer arrivals and service times. So this is the point you're trying to make. That is, if you want to make a decision on waiting lines, because of the random nature in which customers arrive or are served, we cannot have a specific time or a specific time frame being tagged on the number of customers being saved or, or the, uh, the number of customers coming in. For instance, if I, if I asked you, let's take a major street in Accra, let's say, or in Ghana, the motorway. Can you tell me on the, uh, how many cars use that, that, car, that, that road in a day? You know, on a certain day, it could be a certain number. On another day, it could be another number. So, and the numbers, as the days go on and on and on, the numbers could vary. But if we did this analysis over time and we took an average, we can make our decision based on this average, and that will give us a fair idea of of what of what uh, the number of cars that use that route probably in a day, in a month, in a week, and that order. And so, we are going to base more of our analysis on these averages, okay, or decisions or managing this waiting times. Okay, so in considering the single server waiting line system, the most important factors in the system are one, what we call the queuing discipline. What is the order in which customers are served? Do you do first come, first serve, or first come, last served? That would be really interesting. Or probably, uh, you know, you pick at random to serve in the order. The order in which customers are served is what we refer to as the queuing discipline. Now, the nature of the calling population. When we talk of the nature of the calling population, we say our calling population could be finite or infinite. Do you have a specific number of people or a specific set of people that you see to or anyone could just walk into your organization and, and, and require for a service? For instance, if I were selling call credits, which was only MTN, you notice that the population of people or the kind of people who would come to buy credits for me would be only people who use MTN. You get it. And so if, let's say, we, are, we have 10 million people in, in Ghana who use MTN and I'm the only MTN seller in this country, it means that my population is just 10 million MTN users. I hope you understand. Now, but so let me bring you home. For instance, if we take a hospital, and it's not a specialist hospital, 
anyone who has any kind of problem can go to the hospital to, to require for it. So in that case, your population is infinite. It could be anyone, anyone. But how about a doctor who is seeing patients according to appointments? You do notice that not anyone can go and see that doctor. It is only those who have actually booked appointment. And so in that case, our calling population is finite. Okay, and then the arrival rate is the rate at which uh, customers walk into our service center. And then the service rate is just the rate at which, or the time taken to serve uh, our customers. Okay, and so we say that, so now let's look at these, these uh, principles one by one. So like I've explained this already, the calling population uh, is the source of the customers. It can be finite, a large number of possible customers, it could be infinite. And then uh, the arrival rate is the rate at which customers arrive at the facility. So we say that arrivals are assumed to be independent of each other, and so they are randomly distributed. So sorry, they are Poisson. It follows a, a Poisson distribution, but it occurs in a random manner. So, and then uh, it can also be estimated from empirical data or an average empirical data. And so we, we would have to collect data over time to understand or as, to, to just un see how the arrival rate looks like or is distributed. And then the service rate is the, is the average number of customers who can be served during a specific period of time. And so the service rate is a random variable. So it's also affected by the size of the customer purchase, the amount of change that cashier must count out. You know, all the, just giving you the idea, all these things come together to determine the time it takes to serve a customer, what the customer is coming to do, uh, what it entails, the process, and all these things. Okay, so, and then the service rate, we also see most frequently is described by uh, uh, a negative exponential probability distribution, or we just say that it is exponentially distributed. Okay, now, so, um, it should also be noted that in a queuing system, both arrivals and service must be compatible units of measure. So all we are just saying is that, for instance, if you are assessing the average number of arrivals, if you're saying the number of arrivals is in hours, then the number of uh, uh, the average number of service must also be in hours. If it's in minutes, then they both must be in in the same units of measure. One should not be in hours, and then the other one being in minutes. In that case, whatever analysis you're trying to make would barely make sense. Okay, because both of them will be interacting hand in hand. Now, okay, so for instance, we're saying that customers arrive at the rate, uh, customers' arrival rate is 10 per hour, and three customers are saved every 15 minutes. You see it. So if, if you think about this, you may want to reconsider this and reconverting, uh, you know, uh, either the minutes into hours or uh, vice versa. Okay, but preferably it's, it's better using minutes it's because it's easier to convert. Okay, so for the purposes of this lesson, we are going to have four basic assumptions. The assumption is that there's an infinite, we're going to assume that our calling population would be an infinite one. And then the queue discipline will be a first come, first served queue discipline. Our arrival rate will be Poisson distributed, and then uh, our service times will be exponentially distributed. Now, I think these are, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's understandable. You know, the Poisson distribution tells us that something, it, it measures the occurrence of an event within a certain specific time. You get it, and then the time taken for an event to occur within the some space is the exponential service time. So, and then the first come first serve is always the obvious way of serving customers whenever you find queues occurring. And then we are just assuming an infinite population core because we don't want. We are assuming there isn't any discriminating factor as yet. Okay, so uh, that's why we, we we pick these assumptions for now. Now, so for in doing this analysis, we are going to fall on some quantitative uh, techniques or some quantitative analytic methods. And so we, we're just going to represent some of these terms with some, uh, what's it called, uh, variables, just to make uh, our computation nicer and easier, okay? And then we'll go through some, some of the formulas just to see how this thing works out. And uh, very easy stuff, nothing difficult about this. This is just basic division and, and stuff and nothing. Okay, so 
the arrival rate, which, say, which is the average number of arrivals per period. Now, if you want to consider how we find the arrival rate, all we're just saying is we can just use empirical data. So, for instance, let's just take a typical hospital and let's just try and find the arrival rate at our OPD, or what we call the outpatient department. Now, every day, let's do this for, let's say, for six months, or just, let's even just say for a week. So, on the average, every week, let's just find how many customers visit our OPD. So, day one, you can have, let's say, 400 customers. Day two, you can have 500. Day three, you can have 250. Day four, you can have 500. Day three, you can have 350 in that order, up to maybe seven days. When we are done, we sum all of these numbers, and then we will just find uh, uh, the average that that okay. But that is in a day. You can also do it within an hour. So just take within every hour how many customers come to this thing, uh, the the OPD, and so within let's say 6 a.m. to 7 a.m. Then we can go 10 a.m. to 12 something. We could, you could do. You could just collect this data from time to time, and then over time find the average. That will give us what we call the arrival rate, which we refer to as the average number of arrivals per time period. So if you want to do it per hour, you can do it per minute, per per second. That is if it is possible anyway. Okay, so that's uh, that's just it. And the same occurs with the service rate. It says that the average number saved. The average number of customers served per time period. So, okay, so we said that we'll use this, uh, uh, what's it called? Um, we'll use this thing we call uh, lambda here. We'll use lambda to represent, um, okay, so just a second, we want to use, we want to get the pointer for us. Okay, so here, this sign here, we call it lambda. We represent the arrival rate with this uh, this thing here we call lambda. And then we also take mu to represent the service rate. And now we have also said that here, our lambda here, which we are calling our arrival rate, should be less than the service rate. Now, think about this critically. If your service rate is higher than the arrival rate, definitely your queues would be reducing. And then eventually everyone will get saved. But if your arrival rate is higher than your service rate, then there's always going to be someone left in the queue who will go unsaved. But we don't want that happening. And so the assumption is that all the time, our lambda should be less than our mu. Okay, so we're going to look at some basic formulas that will just help us assess some probabilities. So we're only going to find the probabilities of some, some events occurring and then the time, the average times that we are going to. So I'll explain them one after the other as we move forward. So these are some of the uh, some operating formulas for the single server model. Now, if you want to find the probability that no customer would be in the queuing system, so you want that uh, feeling. I don't know if, if you've experienced it before. You bump into a banking hall, and it's like a miracle. There's no one in the banking hall, and it's just you. Just present your check directly to the, the cashier or the whoever is in the, tel the cage. And then she gives you your money, and you're out. Now, if you want to find the probability that you have a similar experience, so we say P0, meaning that probability that no customer zero customers are in the queuing system, then we say it is one minus the ratio of lambda over mu. Okay, so one minus lambda over mu will give us the probability of no one being in the queue. 